Good morning. This is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. And we are going to be talking about the Building Blocks book by Michelle Hunter. And I've talked to her, talked about her many, many times in the past, and she's a fantastic teacher. And she has this beautiful book that she has, and she also has this building with lace. And I couldn't find the building in color, but these are her books that I'm talking about. And the one in particular I'm going to be focusing on today is Building Blocks. And each block teaches you a new skill. So if you look at her series of, um, this is just a few of the blocks that you learn how to make. And each block, like I said, teaches you a new skill. So if you want to learn a bunch of new skills in short order on small projects, these 10 by 10 blocks are a perfect example uh, to be able to learn lots of skills in a small amount of time. Jim, can you show them this? Sure. This is my set of blocks here that I have started, and I am doing mine in a long strip, as you can see. And that way I'll have half the seaming work, and I thought that was pretty cool. So, and I'm also using the lovely Sueno yarn, and this is going to be our prize for today. And the way that you win prizes is you tell us where you're from, maybe what you're working on, what you're passionate about, anything. You can comment anything and you'll be entered to win. So this is lovely Sueno and it is a it is a 80-20 blend of bamboo and merino and it is a fantastic yarn and that's what I've chosen to make my blocks out of and I think our last week's winner um, won this ultra alpaca eco and I was talking about how beautiful this yarn is and how nice and soft it feels because it's it's undyed yarn and it is a 50 50 blend of alpaca and wool and it, it's a fantastic yarn so last week's winner will have that and Jim did you have any questions out there nope De Debbie nope. a bunch of people joining Hi, uh, good Linda morning, Suzanne Donna nice to have you all here yeah, I'm really excited. I've been doing this. I started this block class just this last week, and it's a block of the month, and it's through Alpaca Direct, and there's some wonderful ladies that I met, and we started our blocks, and I got them going on that, and so we're going to be doing that all through this year, and then we're going to be learning how to seam the blocks together, but today I thought I would go ahead and go over a few techniques use that we can use to seam our blocks together for all of you who have a whole bunch of blocks that kind of look like this Jim and they're undone and you haven't finished it yet oh my goodness you guys it isn't hard a few little tiny skills and you can be seaming your blocks and it's fantastic so Jim I'm gonna come over here on this other side and we're gonna see if we can get started before I start with my seaming skills what I wanted to talk to you about was stitch markers because when you're doing these building block patterns you may have you always have your four stitch seed stitch on the edge so I use a stitch marker to identify those four stitches on either side and that keeps my seed stitch beautiful so I don't forget where I need to do that and I also like to do a different colored marker for the beginning of the round. This one I have pink because girls go before boys. So I know it's always a right-sided row. And another thing that I do for my students, lots of times when they first start these blocks, they have a hard time identifying the right side of the fabric versus the wrong side of the fabric. And so I will take a locking stitch marker and put it on the front of the work. And we sell the Alpaca Direct uh, locking stitch markers here. And we have, they're a 40 pack count and the price is really reasonable. So if you need those, those are there for you. And so I just wanted to talk about these stitch markers and, and just let people know who haven't um, used stitch markers before that maybe they might want to try and use stitch markers. Now on this pattern, I have some right-leaning cables. And then in this larger section, I go from right-leaning cable over to a left-leaning cable. So I have put a stitch marker on either side of that to identify where I'm going to be going from a right-leaning cable over to a left-leaning cable. Of course, this is not my cable row at the moment, but I'll show you when I get to that the 
stitch marker here. All you do with stitch markers is you slip them from the left hand needle over to the right hand needle and think of them as a bookmark of uh, something that you want to keep track of and you're going to be coming back to again and again and you're just going to hold that spot so that you don't forget something. Okay, and that's what they're used for. A lot of times when we have like a 12 stitch repeat of something, we will um, go ahead and mark that tw every 12 stitches. That way, if we're off pattern and we get through 12 stitches and we find out that we have stitches left over or what have you, we only have 12 stitches that we have to take out. So I think um, stitch markers help in other, <laughs> I don't know how I would live without them, to tell you the truth. Um, they are fantastic helper for me and they are definitely one of my most important things that I have in my knitting bag is my stitch markers. Why don't you show them so, what you're doing when you're flipping it over there? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So I have now I know I'm on a wrong sided row because I don't have my pink stitch marker. I'm on a green stitch marker. So I would just knit to this and then I slip it from the left hand needle over to the right hand needle. So it's pretty simple, but stitch markers are very valuable and I would highly recommend for those who have never tried stitch markers, please do try them because you might decide that you really, really like them. So now I'm gonna be looking at seaming techniques to seam our blocks together. And this is uh, seaming work. A lot of seaming work um, can be used for knitting sleeves onto your uh, sweater, or you know, maybe you have knit your whole sweater in pieces and you have to seam the sweater together. These techniques can be used. So this particular, this particular seam is called a whip stitch and it's for a um, horizontal seam and so if we look at it closely i have a bind off edge here's a bind off edge and i have the cast on edge and those are touching each other with our blocks facing up okay with the right side of our block facing up and then how you do that is you take your two blocks and you close them, you put them together so the right sides are touching each other, right? And then you, I'm using contrasting yarn. Normally you would take yarn that's three times the width of the area that you're working on. This is just a so short sample because I don't intend to do the whole thing today because it would take too long. So I would go ahead and grab over on this other side here, you look for your last where your very edge of your block is and you would go ahead and put that on there. You need to leave a tail that's uh, about six inches so that you can weave in your ends later. And then what you're looking for is see the V stitches right here? Those You want to get underneath each one of those and then on this cast on edge it is a little bit hard to see but you want to get the strands, two, two strands on this one too and if you look like that and that and that those would be the ones that you would want to use so then you would bring your yarn to the back and you go ahead and start with your first stitch and you're looking for that two strands right here and two strands right here okay then you would bring it around notice I'm bringing the needle towards me it's going this way and then it goes up over the top and goes into another stitch and it goes up over the top and comes toward me again. And what you you want the gauge here, the tightness there, to be about the same tightness as you're knitting. You don't want to pull on it so tight that you have um, a ridge that is really not forgiving and um, stiff. So you don't want that. So, but you just keep going along. And this is all you have to do to be able to do this overcast or whip stitch. And if you open it up, if it's in the same color of yarn, and it, you can pull it just a little tighter, and it, it's almost invisible. It's a very clean way to seam and not have too much of a ridge. Do you see how it's pretty flat on both sides? So that is pretty f fantastic technique and definitely worth 
learning and it's not too difficult and it is kind of fun if you tell yourself when you're doing these instead of saying I don't like finished work um, tell yourself how um, how quickly can I get my finished work done and how um, nicely it, how, am I going to do it so you challenge yourself to make it look as good as it can possibly look so this next one is for a vertical seam going up and down and if you look at these, this is called a mattress stitch, right? So you have your right side facing up toward you. And you have the, um, if you look on the edges here, you have your edges of your work, right? And what we're going to do, there's a couple of different things that you can do. Let me show you this little part that I did here. First, this top part up here I did, and I'll show you. I did it by choosing the stitch one stitch in so what if I look up here I chose these bars right in here so I left this very edge stitch alone and took the two bars on each side here now you can use one bar on either side it's totally up to you I find that using two bars creates a little less bulk and a little less um, yarn so it is not um, doesn't stick out quite as much but a lot of people will just choose one bar so and then on this area right here I was trying to get a little less of a bump on the back of your work so what I did is I went ahead and went to the very edge stitch and picked up the bars right on the very edge stitch and that seemed to create a sturdy enough fabric it didn't seem like it would fall apart or anything like that and so it's totally personal preference in what you want to do so to start this technique you have a you get you grab your very starting pearl bump on that one side doesn't matter which side you work from um, you're working either on the left side or the right hand side you're going back and forth from one to the other right so I'll show you where you go one stitch in, which is the most common way that people do it. And I'm leaving a tail that's six to eight inches or at least six inches long. So then I go up in here, see how I have two bars right there? So I would go to over to the right hand side and grab two bars. And you can do this very loosely and then gather it up after you've done a few stitches. And so I'm going to go over to this other, this edge right here where I'm at right now, it has the end woven in there. So it's kind of fat and bulky, but it's wonderful because Shelly, one of our knitters, she allowed me to have these squares because she wasn't using them. And I thought it would be a great way to teach you guys new skills. So we have two bars over on this side. Notice that I'm putting my needle in where I came out from, from the yarn below. Okay. So I would put my needle right in there where I came out of on that last one I'm trying to keep my tail out of the way and then go up again and then go up here again so I'm just going back and forth you see how that is super super simple and then when you have a few stitches done you just pull it tight do you see how that disappears <laughs> pretty cool it's a great technique and it's actually quite fun once you get the hang of doing it and this is used for a vertical seam and it's called the mattress stitch and it's totally fantastic now let me just show you a few stitches where I did the very edge seam okay so I'm gonna go in on that other seam but I'm gonna come way over here to this right to the very outer edge and let me get my tail out of the way it's trying to hang on there so instead of going there, I'm going to come way out over here to the very edge, okay? And then on this side, I have to go back in where I came out of, and you just find the next where there's a two bars. There's a question, is the mattress stitch lay flat? <clears throat> no, the mattress, see the mattress stitch, see how it has a bump on the back? And if you do it on the very edge, it's almost flat. It's pretty darn flat. If I block this one with just going on the very edge, like I'm um, showing you right now, um, it will um, lay pretty flat. It's pretty darn nice. And it seems like it's sturdy enough to, so now this one I pulled it a little tiny bit tight and then I was having a hard time seeing. So, 
you don't have to you just like after about five stitches or so you want to tighten it up because if you wait till too long it turns into kind of difficult to pull tight so um, just making sure that after you've done a little ways go ahead and pull it tight and and see so if that one is it, it looks pretty good do you see how it's pretty flat and let me show you on with one seam it is pretty darn flat right here this right here is what you're looking at it's pretty flat and if I pull my sorry my working yarn see it's pretty flat from here so if you do it right on the edge you can get it pretty f flat but I saw this other technique and this one was it kind of excited me it's using a crochet hook you know how you guys I like uh, mixing crochet and knitting I just think there's so many benefits to using both together because they both have their um, advantages and so I'm gonna turn this around here so you can see it and this one is called a zipper join with the crochet with using a crochet hook and I have woven in that end so it didn't escape away from me but do you see how it has chain stitches going all the way up here it is very cool I like this technique and I I saw it and I was very excited I saw it on you know how I tell you guys all the time to look on Ravelry and I was looking under the building blocks how they were seeming their projects together and a very talented uh, knitter used this method and I went ooh that's something I need to learn how to do so you know me I have to go and research it so but look at the back of it isn't that cool this is using contrasting yarn but it lays completely felt flat and let me tell you it's not exactly super easy you can do this on a vertical seam you can do it on a horizontal seam you can do it on any seam the only thing you need to make sure that you remember is that you have the right sides facing up and then when you're grabbing your loops to be able to do this you're grabbing them from the back and your working yarn needs to always stay in the back if it somehow tries to cross in the front don't let it do it because it makes a ridge on your work that looks ugly if you do it the wrong way let me see if I can show you how to do this and oh it's pretty cool okay so I'm doing this in contrasting yarn right so you could see it so I grab a loop right oh let's see if I can grab one that's closer to the oh I'll just grab it right right it's a little hard to get started but once you get the hang of it once I was doing it for a few minutes I actually got faster at it and I know it seems painfully slow at the moment but um, I wouldn't let that scare you off um, anything that's worth learning is you know it might take a little bit of time but oh, I love having these little skills that I can do for different things and this made this decorative little edge that was really really cute so I'm going to scoop my tail on the back here on this first one. And they say that you can use the slip knot too. And some of you are probably better at crocheting than I am and can whip right through this. But let me show you the gist of it. So I'm grabbing a strand from the back here on this one on the left hand side. Then I go over to the right hand side and I grab a the next stitch up from there. And then I do the yarn over and bring my do like a chain stitch now remember when you're doing this chain stitching don't get it tight because if you get it tight it'll pull your work in and that is not a pretty look either you don't want that so you got one on that side and then you gotta drop that so you don't and then you come over to this other side here whoop, and then do a yarn over and then you get another chain stitch remember not to pull it tight but do you see how easy it is you got these little chain stitches forming and then you can just uh, you can do this all the way around and it, it'll actually make a decorative stitch the only thing that you have to keep in mind when you're doing this is you always want to chain stitch in the same direction because you see how this one's pointing down and this one's pointing up you don't want to do that you want all your work so if you have your the vertical ones going up and then the one all, everything else going to the right then then you would know but you just need to make sure that you did do that as you're seaming your blocks along because you don't want some of the stitches pointing to the right and some pointing to the left because it's going to look like a chaotic mess but that was a really neat 
trick and it's called the zipper join using a crochet hook and that is a couple of things that I learned this week so that was pretty cool now let's take a look I told you about how to win or to enter to win our prize this week for this lovely Sueno and this is an 80-20 blend of merino and bamboo it's a machine washable yarn and I love this yarn I'm using it for my building blocks that I'm doing and this class just started this last week, so it's very cool. If you guys wanted to get the book and give it a try, Michelle Hunter is a fantastic teacher. And we also have a ton of YouTube videos to support you on our website as well. And we're adding more videos every single week. So there should be lots for you to learn there. And then the winner, oh my gosh, Jim, we gotta say, Say who the winner was for like oh Ellen Vanderwell Ellen Van Ellen congratulations you won the Ultra Alpaca Eco this is wonderful yarn I, it is a newer yarn for Baraco and it is um, not as well known it is undyed and it's super soft I love this yarn the Ultra Alpaca is a very economical yarn and a lovely yarn to boot it is I've used it for hundreds of projects. Anyways, fantastic yarn. So congratulations, Ellen. All you have to do is give us your address at customer service and we can send your prize out to you. And for the person this week, all you have to do to enter is to win this lovely Sueno is tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Maybe you can inspire us to do new projects. If they're really cool, oh boy, I, I'll be on it knitting it. It's so awesome. I love learning from you guys too. And there are so many talented knitters out there in our VIP Facebook group. And we have, that is free. So if you wanted to join in with other knitters and you don't have a local yarn shop, our VIP group is fantastic. We have some wonderful, lovely ladies. And they, they support you where you're at with your knitting or crochet. And don't ever feel bad about where you are in your skill level because we're all learning every day and we totally are excited about sharing with each other so oh this next week we are going to be talking about this wonderful pattern by andrea maori it's called the golden hour and it's a wonderful shawl and i'm going to be talking about it it has mosaic knitting in it so it's totally awesome. It's a newer pattern of hers. And I was going to do um, a different one from her, a cowl one. And uh, the girls really like this one. So I'm, And we have these yeah. on our site. So, now. yes. Oh, yes. And we have some wonderful pattern designers. We brought in some more of the, um, let's say, popular designers. And you can find those on Alpaca Direct if you enjoy having the wonderful hard copies and boy some these patterns are a little tiny bit expensive but if you look at all the colored pages it's almost like coffee table um, patterns they're so beautiful that you'll want to keep them and they're just beautiful to look at and to knit because I'm having fun knitting it too so was there anything else that I missed Jim mm. oh yes summary sorry you guys my husband is so good at keeping me on track. So the short of the story from today was that finished work is fantastic and our best friend should be our stitch markers. We use stitch markers so that we identify the areas where we might have problems and so we don't have any problems so we don't have to go backwards. <laughs> in our knitting and then we can also finish our blocks so they look totally beautiful so if you guys have tried other techniques or you have anything that you want to share with us so that we can help others learn uh, maybe your little tips and tricks that you have that'd be fantastic peggy says um finishing work is like icing on the cake it absolutely is you know it used to be my least favorite thing of anything ever and then i started telling myself you know what it, it's not that hard and I like doing it in the evening time when I'm tired if I'm I have knit a lot my hands are sore and I'm like you know I need a break from that and then the finish work is quite fun and I love making it a challenge so that I weave in my ends and I tell myself can I see where I wove that in or is it invisible and if it's invisible I'm happy so you guys have a great week and next week we'll be talking about the fantastic pattern from Andrea Maori.